Night, sweetie. I love you. Daddy, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is it Hunter a hero? Of course he was. He was the bravest hero in all of Ireland. But he killed a dog. Well, he had a good reason. He killed a dog because he was late for a party. <sighs> It didn't happen exactly like that. You just don't understand. Well, look, maybe I'll tell you the real story. I look in my big red book. What are you looking at? I'm waiting for the dream sequence to start. Any minute now. It's low budget. Ah, here we go. Our story begins in Ireland, in a time of myth and legend. One day, three young boys were on their way through the forest to a party at King Cullen's house. It was a great honour to be invited, but these were no ordinary boys for they were the best hurlers in all the land. Hurling being the traditional Irish sport played with stick and ball that we both already know about. They were Finbar the Fair. Can you guess which one he is? The guy in the New York t-shirt? Exactly. Ronan the Red, that's him on the left. And the youngest boy of all, Satanta. Hang on, hang on. Which one is Satanta? The one in the middle. He's the youngest? How old is he supposed to be? Mm, it says here he was seven. Seventy what? No, no, seven. Seriously? Look, you'd have to be crazy to cast your child in a movie like this. Let's not overthink it. Now, where were we? Ah yes, the boy Satanta. Brave, handsome, and modest. The other boys worshipped him like a god. Just then, Satanta spotted danger in the distance. He instinctively knew this could be a spy or something. Bravely telling the other boys to hang back, Satanta volunteered to investigate himself. Satanta knew surprise was key and so bravely hid behind a tree. Is it all gonna rhyme? Mm, no. But who was this stranger? Assassin or spy? There was only one way to find out. The spy was disguised as a comely maiden, but Satanta wasn't fooled. He moved quickly to interrogate. Why does he have a flower? Well, he's obviously deep undercover at this point. What a pro. Satanta bamboozled the spy with his hurley and slitter, hoping to trick her into revealing herself. But Satanta's game went on too long, and Finbar and Ronan, fearing they would miss the party, urged him to leave. But brave Satanta, not wishing to leave the spy unguarded, courageously stayed behind. With such dedication. And so then to the castle of King Cullen. Dog lover, stickler for punctuality, and a highly pretentious host who forced all of his guards to wear ridiculous helmets with horns on them, even though these have never been worn by real warriors in any context ever, even Vikings. Rich people are weird. Cullen's castle gate was also the home of a notoriously strict door policy that Finbar and Ronan were soon to run afoul of. After convincing the guards that the New York symbol on Finbar's t-shirt was not a sign of demons, they were eventually admitted. Meanwhile, in the forest, Satanta was continuing to try to get to the bottom of things, when he heard a sound that struck fear into his heart. The horn for last orders. He reluctantly released the spy and sped off towards the castle, so quickly that he forgot his slither, but the friendly spy was happy to return it. This guy's the best hurler in Ireland? Standards were lower back then.
Meanwhile, Colin's guards, a famously thirsty bunch, locked the castle gate behind them and headed straight off to the party. But when Satanta arrived at the castle, he found it was all closed up. He knocked and knocked, but there was no one there to hear him. No one human, that is. Things wouldn't have been so bad if it wasn't for Cullen's coup. Coup means dog, or hound, or, in this case, the fiercest wolfhound in Ireland. With no choice left but to defend himself, Satanta battled the beast fearlessly, making full use of his hurley. Both of them. Satanta courageously climbed the nearest tree to survey the battlefield and plan his next move. Meanwhile, King Cullen, the most handsome, most eligible bachelor king in Ireland, came looking for his dog. The chubby one in green? It was a time before tailors. It looks like it was a time before gems. Back in the tree, Satanta had come up with a cunning plan. He would use his prowess at hurling to defeat the hellhound. Back at the castle, King Cullen couldn't find his dog anywhere. He feared it was lost. Fear not, King Cullen. It's about to be found. Miserere, miserere, canis mot there'd been a tragic accident. But maybe this wasn't Colin's dog. Maybe this was a stray or something. Oh dear. So not a stray then. Well, there was only one thing to do. Go straight to Colin to confess. Are you sure he was going to confess? Yeah, sure, almost certainly. He's a hero, right? Nearby, at that very moment, King Cullen was surprised to feel something very much like a dog collar bounce off his tautly muscled chest. His what? What could it be? Surely not. In all the circumstances, Cullen took the death of his dog extremely well. Luckily, just then, Satanta arrived to confess. King Cullen wasn't initially overjoyed, and things were looking grim, when Satanta came up with another bright idea. He would replace the dog himself. Yes, until a replacement dog could be reared, Satanta would guard Cullen's castle day and night, and henceforth be known as Ku Cullen. Even though his dog was dead, King Cullen was pleased he had a replacement. And Satanta, now Ku Cullen, had a new life to look forward to at the castle kennels. Ku Cullen. Truly, Ireland's bravest hero. The end. Are you sure that's what really happened? Yeah, or something like that. Did he, did Cucullin have any other adventures? Sure, he did. But that'll have to wait till next time.
he imprison her at a nice restaurant? Hopefully. <laughs> I don't think this guy goes to nice restaurants. <laughs>